Hi guys, this is just a continuation of our discussion last time. So last time, we have discussed uh, how to solve a statically determinate beam using the double integration method. Uh, kung hindi nyo pa siya nakikita, you can uh, click the link on the, descri on the description below. No? But today, we will, what we will be discussing is uh, a solving statically indeterminate beam using the double integration method. So since we have already discussed also uh, the concept of the double integration method, what are the requirements in performing this method or this type of geometric method in this structural type of beam? No? So let's check first if this is indeed a statically indeterminate beam as you can see we have here a prop a prop beam 10 meters long that's uh, uh yes 10 meters long with the fixed support at the leftmost part of the beam which is at point a and a roller support at point f so as you can see we have uh, four unknown reactions here and one member so that will give you four minus three times one equals one so that will give you a statically indeterminate beam to the first degree so in this case we don't know what the reactions are so what we will be solving here are actually the reactions we need to solve for the reactions uh, using the double integration method okay so since we don't have the reactions let's draw first the uh, free body diagram so last time ang unang unang requirement daw natin is unang una syempre is to draw the elastic curve but since this is uh, somewhat complicated kasi meron tayong uh, applied couple or applied moment here a concentrated moment at point B uh, ang unang gawin natin ngayon is to cut the member at the last segment in this case that is at segment EF okay and let's draw the free body diagram no? so ganito yan we will cut it here no? so, let's say this is your distance X okay so we have here and ano yung mga forces in our free body diagram we have here your reaction at A okay then we have here your moment support moment at A or active moment at A then we have here your applied concentrated moment so wala pa lang nakalagay na value so let's say this is uh, 10 kilonewton meter so this is 10 kilonewton meter then we have here your applied point load of 40 kilonewtons then as you can see no um, if we are to use yung last method natin which is yung Macaulay method in the, in providing a single moment equation for the whole beam last time we we said that the loads the uniform loads must be uh, must be continuous okay so uh, as you can see yung uniform load natin na 10 kN per meter is only up to segment DE and since we will be cutting on segment EF that uniform load must be continuous so ano po yung gagawin natin let's go back here no? so it should be extended so that it can be it should be continuous no? So, extend natin siya dito. Pagka natin siya ng kung mahilip na. Siyempre, to retain the original loadings, it must have a counteractive force. No? Kung ano po yung dinagdag, yun din po yung ilagdag natin with same magnitude but of opposite direction so that we can maintain the original loadings of the beam system okay so in that case we will be having here 
a uh, cut uniform load so this is your 10 kilonewton per meter and up to this part no meron din tayong nakakat na upward naman also 10 kilonewton per meter so since this is a cut member we will be having here an internal moment so let's assume positive direction and positive direction or a positive moment makes the beam smile so this should be the direction counterclockwise okay so let's have the distances para hindi tayo malito later so we have here your distance x then we have here your 2 meters 1 meter 1 meter and this is 4 meters therefore this is x 2 3 4 8 so this is x minus 8 okay then itong load na to is uh, x minus 4 then the point load is x minus 3 and the last load yung which is the applied concentrated moment so that is x minus 2 okay so this is this distances are very important because sabi nga natin last time it is what we call the locators it shows the location of your given nodes no? so let's create the moment equation remember we have two redundant ah, sorry we have one redundant force in this case but we have two unknown force if we will be cutting or based on our free body diagram okay and that is m a and r a so in this case we can create the moment equation in terms of the loadings and in terms of the reactive forces r a and m a we have here m equals r a multiplied by the distance x so that's x r a Then, ano pa yung positive? We have also ito, in 10. So, that will give you plus 10 kilonewton per meter multiplied by the distance, which is x minus 8 multiplied by its uh, multiplied by its uh, centroid, which is only half of this distance. So, then it's multiplied by x minus 8 over 2. Minus, we have ma minus uh, sorry we have also plus 10 pala because these are they are counteracting so we have here plus 10 okay by the way if we will be writing the moment equation with a given concentrated moment we must show the location of that moment. So, paano natin siya gagawin? Eh, when we say moment equation, it's just force times distance. If you have, if you are given a uh, distributed load, it should be the area of the distributed load multiplied by its centroid papunta, going to the um, point of rotation or for at the point of uh, yung moment natin. So, in this case, since this is already a moment, and you need to multiply it to uh, a locator and its locator is actually or that is actually x minus 2 no? from this point up to the point of rotation so in that case um, we need to multiply it by a distance that is x minus 2 but since this is already a moment this should be uh, must or this should be equal to 1 no? or let's say unit less na lang so we need to raise this to zero. So, kung papansin nyo, wala naman, wala naman siyang nabigay na value because this is actually raised to zero. And any terms raised to zero is equal to one. But, why we put this is because it signifies the location of the concentrated moment. Hindi kasi pwedeng 
wala tayong location eh, ng bawat loading natin. Remember last time when we discussed the locators, uh, this is very important because we we need to identify if we, for example, if we substitute a value of x because we are determining the value of the slope or the deflection, we need to identify if we have already passed through or reached that load when we substitute a value of x. That's why the location of the loads are very important. Okay. Likewise, with the concentrated moment, that's why we need to multiply it by, by, by the locator. But since we don't want to change the value of the moment at that point, we just raise the, the locator of that, of that concentrated moment to zero. So next, we have also minus 40 multiplied by its distance, which is x minus 3. Then, we have here the distributed load, so that's minus 10, multiplied by its distance, which is x minus 4, multiplied by its uh, centroid, which is x minus 4 over 2. So, wala na ba? Ilan ba yung lahat ng loads? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, meron tayong lahat ng loads. So, let's simplify. We have here XRA. Plus, pag samahin mo natin lahat ng positive, so 10 divided by 2, 5, that will give you 5 multiplied by x minus 8 squared. Then here, plus 10 multiplied by x minus 2 raised to 0. Minus ma. Okay. Actually, it can be written as ma times x raised to 0. So, pwede naman. No? So, that we can have our locator here, yung x natin minus 40 times x minus 3 minus 10 divided by 2 that will give you 5 also of x minus 4 squared and remember based on uh, the disc our discussion in the concept of the double integration method your moment function is equal to the modulus of elasticity e multiplied by um, the moment of inertia and this term is actually what we call the flexural rigidity multiplied by the second derivative of the function and remember this function is actually the function or the equation of the elastic curve okay so let's integrate we have here your ei y double prime equals this will give you um, r a over 2 times x squared plus 5 over 3 of x minus 8 cubed plus as you can see this is just raised to 0 with the locator so this will become 10 times x minus 2 raised to 1 that's why it's, it's very important that we have locators and then we have x and a minus 4 20 times x minus 3 squared minus 5 over 3 of x minus 4 cubed. Obviously, we have here your arbitrary constant, C1. Integrating it again, sorry, prime na pala to. Okay, so integrating it again, we have EIY equals RA over 6 times x cubed plus 5 over 4 plus i3 uh, plus 1, 4 times 3, 12 times x minus 8 raised to 4 plus 5 times x minus 2 squared minus ma over 2 times x squared minus 20 over 3 times x minus 3 cubed minus 5 over 12 of x minus 4 raised to 4 plus c1x plus C2. Now, as you can see, based on our uh, last equation, which is the deflection equation, okay, we have how many unknowns? We have four unknowns. No? We have RA, we have MA, then we have also the arbitrary constant C1 and 
C2. So we have four, you know, four unknowns here. So in that case, we actually need to provide four equations so that we can solve this unknown. So, so paano ba natin yung masasolve? So una-una, sabi natin last time, uh, we have, we in in order to solve, in a differential equation problem, no? in order to solve the arbitrary constant of a general solution so that we can have a particular solution, what we need to have is what we call the boundary condition. So last time, we have already discussed that. So, ilagay na lang natin kung ano yung boundary conditions in, the, in this given problem. So, lagay natin, boundary conditions... Okay, number one, based on our given problem, what are the boundary conditions that we can satisfy or we have in this problem? So obviously, we have a fixed support at point A, meaning the deflection at that point is zero. The second one is, it's since it is also a fixed support, the slope at point A must also be zero because a fixed support resists rotational displacement at that point. And as you can also see, point F is a roller support with no settlement, meaning at that point, there is also zero. Okay? The settlement at that point is zero. So let's have, let's put those Boundary condition, so number one, sabi natin, since fixed supports at x equals zero, the deflection is zero. So let's look at the deflection equation. Zero lang daw natin. We have zero, zero. Sabi natin, if we substitute a value and the value inside the parenthesis is negative, we will just neglect that term. No? So zero, neglect, neglect, zero. Neglect, neglect, zero. Therefore, C2 is zero. So actually, we can use yung, by observation in analytic geometry, sabi natin, C2 is the, uh, what we call the uh, intercept of the equation. So meaning that is the initial value. And we all know that since we have a fixed support at the starting point, C2 must be zero. So the second Boundary condition is, since fixed support nga daw yung point A, so at x equals 0, the rotational displacement or slope is also 0. Okay, so by inspection sa analytic geometry, C1 is the, uh, what we call, again, the intercept of this equation, and that is the initial value, and the slope at the initial value is 0, so therefore C1 is 0, or... By substituting na lang, here, we have here 0, 0, neglect, neglect, 0, neglect, neglect, then C1 is 0. Okay, so last boundary condition is at x equals 10, no? that is at point F, and at x equals 10, the deflection is 0. So let's use the deflection equation. We have here is zero now. Equals R A over six times ten. So that will give you R A over six times ten cube plus five over twelve times ten minus eight will give you 2 raised to 4 plus 5 times 10 minus 2 8 squared minus ma over 2 times 10 squared minus 20 over 3 times 10 minus 3 that's 7 cubed minus 5 over 12 times 10 minus 4 6 raised to 4 since c1 and c2 there are already 0 so as you can see 
we can have our values or we can have another equation in terms of r a and m a so that will give you uh, we have 10 cube divide by 6 so that will give you 500 over 3 of R E. Next one natin to 10 squared that will give you 100 divided by 2 minus 50 of M A. Then we put sa kabilang side ng equation yung mga numerical values. We have 2 raised to 4 which is 16 times 5 divided by 12. So we have so, we na natin. We have uh, 5 over 12 times 2 raised to 4 minus 20 over 3 times 7 cube. Meron tayong dinasama, ito pa, plus 5 times 8 squared, so 64 minus 5 over 12 multiplied by 6 raised to 4. So, tama We have 1, 2, 3, 4. We have 1, 2, 3, 4. Then, times negative 1 kasi inilipat natin siya sa kabilang side na equation. So, that will give you 2,500. So as you can see, wala po tayong value ng wala po tayong value ng uh, RA and MA pa. No? But we is, meaning, we still have two unknowns. So ano kayong gagawin natin? Eh, wala na tayong boundary condition. Okay? So kung papansin nyo, we need to have another or one more equation. And since the unknowns are in terms of forces, we can actually provide another equation by the use of the equilibrium equations. Okay? So, in terms of the equilibrium equations, we have... When we are performing equilibrium equations, since the unknowns are RA and MA, we need to have an equilibrium equation that will show RA, RA and MA. So, saan po kaya ako pwede mag-create ng equilibrium equations? If I will be creating a summation of forces vertical, I will have two unknown reactive forces, that is RA and RF. Okay? So, kapag nag-summation ako moment kay A, ang maging unknown ko is MA and F, no? or RF. So, we need to have our summation ng forces, or summation ng moment rather, at point F so that we can have here no? the unknown forces of RA and MA so dito na lang tayo sa gilid para makita natin kagad yung figure so we have here the summation of moment at point F equals 0 clockwise moment equals counterclockwise moment so ano po yung mga clockwise moments natin remember we have here your R A and we have here your moment A. Okay. So we have this is 10. So we have 10 R A. Pwede natin tong i-neglect, no? Since same lang naman yung mag-produce nyo. Ito na lang yung gawin natin. Ano pa ba? Na clockwise. We have 10. So plus 10. So, wala na. So, let's have counterclockwise. We have here your MA. Counterclockwise also is 40. Ang distance ito hanggang dito is 7. So, that's 40 times 7. Then, we have your 10 load. So, this is plus 10 times its distance 4 times its... Uh, centroid location that is 2 plus 2 okay 2 plus yung centroid ito no? 
So, ilan lahat ng loads? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ilan yun? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So, let's simplify. We have 10 RA minus MA equals this is uh, 4 times 4, 16 times 10, that's 160 plus 280 minus 10 so this is 430 okay, equation 2 ang equation 1 natin is yung kanina na 500 over 3 RA minus 50 MA equals 2,500. So, yan yung equation 1 natin kanina. So, we can now solve the part of RA and MA. So, you have here, multiply 1. We have 10, negative 1, 430. We have 500 over 3. We have negative 50 and 2,500. So, we have here, RA is 57. So, that is in kilonewtons. As you can see, it's positive, meaning our assumption is correct. So, this is upward. Then, we have 140 kilonewtons. Kilonewton meter, rather. And again, it's positive, meaning the direction is correct. So, this is rotating counterclockwise. And these are the reactions. Now, how do we now solve for the displacements the slope and the deflection at any given point you will just substitute these values in our deflection and slope equations then you will just substitute the value of x katulad lang din or like the one we have solved last time using the slope as using the statically determined beam so it's 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 up to you so so that you can have your exercises okay so this is our discussion in solving statically indeterminate indeterminate beam using the double integration method